Hey everybody, Terry Good here, and today is day three of the core challenge. Today, I want you to find a piece of equipment. It could be a dumbbell, it could be a medicine ball, it could be soup cans. It doesn't have to be anything too terribly heavy. Beginners, especially if you're working on filling your core, you are going to want to use something pretty light. You are, you are able to sit down while you're doing this exercise. Um, if you find that the hip rotation is hard for you not to do, sit, okay? I'm gonna do this one standing because this is all about using our core while we're standing up. So what I want you to do, think of your core as a box. Remember the front part is your rectus abdominis is here, and then your transverse abdominis is underneath. Your internal and external obliques, think of them more to the side, low back, your pelvic floor is from your pubic bone to your tailbone, and then your diaphragm is from the very top. So let's start with our transverse warm up. We're gonna breathe, okay? You just hold your weight here. I want you to pull that transverse in. Remember the spot right inside of your hip bones. Breathe in, breathe out. As you exhale, pull your belly button into your spine and make sure you're, that you're engaging right here at that transverse, right inside of your hip bones. Breathe in, exhale. Remember, you're not sticking your tummy out. Inhale, exhale. Good, couple more breaths, inhale, and exhale. Now give me 30 seconds of rotation while you're pulling your core in. Remember what I said, I want you to focus on movement from the hip bones up, so I don't want your hips swaying side to side, okay? That's not a bad thing to do, but really the motion is coming from my legs now because I'm moving now my legs. If I hold my hip still and pull my transverse in and up, it's a whole nother feeling and you'll feel it all in your core. Once again, if this is difficult for you, a small child size ball between your knees could help, or you could sit on a, a stability ball and just you'll feel the stability ball move and by holding that still, you'll keep your legs busy. Does that make sense? Okay, let's go into it guys. I'm gonna turn our timer on, 30 seconds, two rounds of three things. The first one is our chop, belly button in. Make sure you're breathing, these are soft. There we go, front chop, and we're gonna move slowly. Feel how you have to use your back and your abdominals to keep that weight from dropping to the floor. You have to use your core here. And this is how you learn how to really engage that core, especially like if you're used to doing so many crunches. Now, I'm guilty of that from, I'm a child of the 80s that, I mean, gosh, that's all we did. We just crunched, crunched, crunched our way into flat abs, but then we also had to still learn how to train that transverse. Okay, now we're going chops on the opposite side. So just go from one shoulder to the next, but keep those arms long, core strong. Rotate your shoulders. So now my shoulders rotate to my left and to my right, but my hips stay pointed forward. Okay, nice and slow. Keep pace with me. I don't want this fast. You'll feel all of those abdominal muscles staying engaged from the standing position. This one could be the best video of all you guys in terms of really transferring from strong abs to actual functional abs. All right, let's go the opposite way for 30 seconds. Rotate up, pull that core in, rotate your shoulders. Good, rotate them the other way. Keep the hips straight. Keep those arms straight. Notice my arms, they're out and away from my body. Keep them out. Whew, I feel my core. I don't know about you, I feel my back, I feel my Abdominals, my obliques. Keep it pulled in tight. My transverse is holding everything in. Three, two, one. Let's go back to that front chop. Straight forward. Notice there's no change in my back. Keep your belly button pulled into your spine and breathe. Remember to be patient with yourself. This is one of those things. The more you practice it, the easier it is to use that muscle. So I recommend pulling that transverse in three or four times a day, just taking some time to think about that. Maybe first thing in the morning, maybe right before bed. You don't have to spend a lot of time on it. You just have to do it. All right, last set of chops. Let's go, or let's go right to left, to left to right. Okay, so I'm at one corner, abs pulled in. I'm moving slowly as I rotate up. Slowly up, slowly down. So sometimes you chop, this is just a chop. Sometimes I say this part's the hay baler because you're throwing hay over your shoulder. And this part is the wood chop because you're chopping down. We're doing this slowly because it's a lot harder to do slow, isn't it? And our core has to work harder to stabilize. Okay, go the other way, last set. And then we stretch. Keep it strong here. Pull those 
abs in. Pull in your transfers. Make sure you're breathing. All right, done. Nice. Okay, so our stretch today is a standing stretch. So I'm gonna have you grab onto anything that any kind of a pole, anything that has something you can grab a hold of, and we're just gonna sit back. This is like child's pose from standing position. You could do this if you were, say, at home on your counter. Um, put your hands on your counter and then just place your hands there and reach back. So we're doing basically child's pose here. Isn't that cool? Just from a standing position. And our last stretch, we're just gonna open up to the sky. Arms up overhead, press up, and then tiny back bend if you can. Think about a tiny back bend really opening up your chest. Clasp your hands, place them overhead. Another way you could do this if you're tall enough is to do a doorway stretch. You could place your hands on the door and walk forward just so you can open up those lats. You could also do a pec stretch if your pecs are tighter, hands at the door and walk forward. Belly button in, protecting my back here and relax. All right guys, good job. Go have a great day.